Welcome back to part 5 of the Bridgeport Torque Cut rebuild. Here you can see him in the garage just pumping the oil out of the gearbox here. So I'm just using a little 12 volt electric pump and um, sucking as much oil as I can out of this thing because when I take this whole assembly up into the workshop I don't want it to get split and um, piss oil all over the floor up in there because I've actually got carpet up in the, the basement workshop so I don't really want oil on the floor in there I've got some oil pans on the workbenches in there just in case anything does spill but um, I'd rather get it drained out here in the garage now so this is this is what you're seeing you can see the motor plate here for the motor that we're going to rebuild and let's get into it so I've now got the gearbox and the motor removed from the torque cut they weigh a friggin ton this thing's like 170 pounds easy I could barely lift it on the workbench transmission's a little bit lighter but it's still like 140 150 pounds it weighs a lot here we've got the turn act rotary actuator that's going to be rebuilt I got a kit for that so the deal here is to strip all this stuff down and um, replace the bearings and fix anything that's not quite right. This um, this motor is a pretty special motor on the bridge port. So they actually have a encoder inside, which feeds back to the the drive on the machine. It almost acts like a a servo drive. The um, the big problem with this was that the fan was just full of crap. Like I've cleaned most of it out, but the problem now is that the the channels that run through the motor here they're absolutely caked in junk and um i gotta strip it down and get all that out there's oil seals on here they'll get replaced and i think the um the bearings aren't completely shot but they're on their way out you can kind of hear a little bit of a beginnings of a rumble but they're not terrible so first job is going to be to remove all these electronics here well the wires shall we say from the um, control box here get the control box off then we'll get the fan assembly off and take a look at that and then we'll get down into the the bowels of the motor i've got to be really really careful here because the encoders in here are rare as hen's teeth and if i bust it then um, it's like a thousand dollar mistake so wish me luck okay let's start taking this thing apart so I'm going to start here in the electrical box we'll get some of these wires out see if we can get this box off so this is a point where I ran into some camera difficulties so I'm just going to talk you through. The um, first thing you have to do is undo all these screws on these terminals and disconnect the wires. So you've got the U, V, W and then the U and the V for the fan. So they come out. Then you've got to unscrew these little connector blocks here that hold down the encoder wires. And then there's another little bracket over on the other side at the top there in the top left corner. You just unscrew that and it all comes loose. Then you can pull out all the... Um, the wires and lift the box off. Next step is that you um, take the fan shroud cover off and um, then you move down to the bottom of the fan shroud where there's four screws that hold the fan shroud and you just take those out and then you can lift the whole fan shroud off. So then you've got the electrical box off and the fan shroud out and it's gonna expose the cover that goes over the top of the encoder that's on the back of the motor. The next step is you got to undo these three screws on the end of the motor shaft and get a puller on that gear and pull that gear off it's on there pretty damn tight so you're going to need a very good quality puller to pull that thing off once you've pulled it off then um, the motor can come apart and then you can move on to the back where you can basically take the cover off of the encoder and then you can work on something to pull the encoder off so here's the brains of the operation. 
this is definitely a rubber glove affair. I don't want to be getting any fingerprints on any of this stuff. I think I'll get the um, feeler gauges out and measure the distance of that little sensor there to the, the wheel. This has got to work when it all goes back together. Not sure what these markings are. Not sure if they're factory or from a previous rebuild or something like that, but I'm going to um, mark it all up, take it apart as carefully as I can. Hopefully it will go back together and work. So once you um, get the encoder wheel uncovered, you just basically remove the little keep, which is held in with two little cap-head screws, and that exposes the motor shaft and the um, encoder wheel. So here I had to mark it up. So it's quite important that this comes off and goes back on in exactly the same spot because it uses the encoder not just for the RPM of the motor but later on I actually found out it uses it for the um, synchronization of the, the stator and the coils in the motor so um, it's quite important it goes back on in the same spot so what I did here was I marked it with a couple of different color markers and then I actually put some very fine scratches on there with a scribe to give me a really good location point now I got it back on as best as I could later on but you know hopefully that works I haven't tested the motor yet so we'll find out when it goes back on the machine um, I had to make a little puller so the last thing you want to do is pry it because it's got a magnetic ring around the outside and if you damage that then it's game over and these encoders are pretty expensive from your scour so I didn't want to buy a new one so what I did here was I took a little block of stainless steel and I made three holes in it in a triangular shape which line up with the holes on the um, on the actual wheel and then I sunk two bolts in that just acted as a brace to help me turn and then in the center I put a threaded hole and then I just drove a cap headed screw in and that just gently pulled off the encoder a little bit at a time until it was off and I managed to get it off without causing any damage to it whatsoever and then I stuck it into a, um, a nice plastic bag to stop any muck or dirt getting on there. You want to do this whole procedure with rubber gloves on because you don't want fingerprints all over the encoder. So once the encoder ring's removed from the motor you're going to see the reed head and here's a couple of pictures of it exposed. You can kind of see the pickups on there that read the magnetic ring. Now it's held on by a um, like a metal ring that's machined to fit perfectly on top of the motor housing so when it goes back it locates properly and then the bolts get it in the right spot and you can see the marks where the bolts held it on so you just line that up and it should be in exactly the same place so I mentioned earlier about using feeler gauges to measure the distance between the reed head and the encoder wheel it's not really necessary because it's all mechanically located so another thing you need to do is to de-pin the connector for the encoder pickup. Um, if you don't do this you can't actually get the whole pickup assembly out of the motor casting so you just need to make notes of which wires, which colour and which plug connector it goes into. If you've got the Yaskawa book you can actually look up the um, colours in the book to put it all back together if you don't do that. The problem I had here is that the colours on the wires were so faded it was very difficult to see what the original colours were so I took photographs and went by that and then double checked with the book afterwards. So with the encoder ring and the electronics removed from the motor then you can come round and get the back casing off the thing. So there's four cap head bolts you can see them here in this picture on the out perimeter. You've got one at the top left right and bottom and you just unwind those and then you should be able to split the back half of the motor off and expose the bearings there. Once you've done that you can go to the front cover and do the front side. So here you can see the front side and the pulleys off the shaft now and you've got four screws that are around the shaft and then if you look at the top and then the left and the bottom and the right you can see another four big cap head bolts so you basically take these four screws out and what those screws do is they actually hold a, a metal retaining plate behind the the bearing there so you've got to take those out otherwise you won't pull it apart 
and then once those are out you can undo the four cap heads and you should just be able to slide that whole casting apart and once you've done that there's nothing supporting the um the actual armature of the motor so be careful as you separate it because the armature of the motor can rub up against the windings and cause some damage so be careful at this spot so this is the final picture of the motor fully disassembled so in the middle there you can see the armature of the motor and you can see the bearing so the right hand side is the output side of the motor which has got the um, the gear on it and then the left hand side is the, the smaller bearing at the back and you can see where it's tapered off on the left hand side that's where the the encoder wheel went on the back so if you look at the larger bearing at the front you can see just behind it there's that little plate that I was talking about so that's what those screws screw into to pull that bearing down into the, the main casting of the motor um, if you look to the right of the armature you can see the the main casting there and then just behind it you've got the actual windings of the motor and then to the left of that you've got the rear casting that holds the um, upper bearing and the encoder wheel so you can kind of see it all stripped down here the fan is also I've removed that fan from the fan shroud so there's just a couple of screws in the underside of that fan shroud that hold that motor in and then there's just a circlip that you can undo and you can pull that all apart and you can change the bearings in that too so the next step here on this whole rebuild process is to clean out all the air breathers through the motor so there's some there's some channels that run through the part of the motor where the windings are to keep it cool and they're just absolutely full of gunk and rubbish and they all need cleaning out and making nice again without making too too much of a mess of the actual windings I don't want to get the windings too dirty but I don't want to wash the whole thing so I'm going to try very carefully to clean those air passages out and get them flowing again and then I'll replace the bearings on the main shaft and get back to reassembling it all so that that's going to be the next video in the series you'll watch me reassemble the motor once it's all cleaned up and made to look nice so I just want to say thanks for watching I know these um, videos can get a bit long and to most people they're really boring but if I can help that one guy out there with an old bridge port that's struggling to get one of these running again then um, hopefully it's all worth it and if you want to subscribe and get me a few more viewers then I'd appreciate that too so until next time take it easy and um, I'll be back soon with the rebuild of the motor.